you know, I, I had problems with my wife when we got married. You know, I grew up in the village, and so you don't talk about love. <laughs> And my wife grew up in the city. And so she talks of loving the food, loving our house. And we are not used to loving things. We only knew in the village that the closest you get to love is loving people, no, not cows or cats or, or other things. And so to reconcile the fact that uh, my wife loved too many things apart from me. <laughs> but I've learned over the last several years of our marriage that, yeah, uh, when she talks of loving other things, it's not the same as loving me. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the things that the Bible talks about and most of the Old Testament, when he's talking about love, it's referring to God or to fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. And it's only in the book of Psalms that uh, David changes the scenario a little bit. But overall, as we look through the Old and the New Testament, the main focus of our love <coughs> is not things, it's people and our God. And as good academicians, sometimes what happens is that we love our learning much more than we love people. Because our learning will lift us, give us a status in society that the other people may not be able to do. So as we talk about love, in our community. The Bible brings to light what love implies when we talk about love for God and love for one another. And I want to briefly look at a number of things that the Bible brings to us, hopefully as a foundation, when we come to looking at the practical sign of love in a community like ours. Love is depicted as God's greatest desire for us. <clears throat> it is referred to as the anchor for the law and the prophets. And so it comes up from the book of Levitic, Levit Leviticus. I hope that's correct. <laughs> From the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, he talks of loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And of course, loving your neighbor as your son. Deuteronomy brings in the loving of God. Leviticus talks about loving your neighbor. But this is the greatest desire of God, even as he was giving the law to Moses, at the background of it all was the love for God and the love for one another as the desire of God. And Jesus Christ repeats this as he speaks in the famous Sermon on the Mount, the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. He repeats this same thing, he brings it out in the light that our greatest Basis from the foundation of our love is our love for God and our love for other human beings. The Bible brings out love as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As Paul puts it in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. That as we look at the outcome of the Holy Spirit's work in us, love is at the core. So you cannot separate the working of the Holy Spirit in your life from the working of the love of God in your life. The love of God, the Bible says, has been poured forth into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. As Paul writes to the Romans, 
thirdly, that the love of God, or love is the covering of many sins. It is a covering. But apart from being a great desire by God, apart from being a fruit of the Holy Spirit, it is a covering for our sins. As clothes cover our nakedness, love covers our sinfulness. And so, if you do not have the love of God manifested in your life, then in a way you are not covered from your sinfulness. Your shame of sin is still visible. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 says that hatred stares, tears, starts, strife, but love covers all sins. And this is what Peter repeats and says that love covers a multitude of sins. But however sinful we may be, when love enters into our lives, it covers our sins. We are presentable. We are worthy because of the love of God shining into our lives and into our hearts. As good academicians, knowledge is good, especially for our, our academic community. Knowledge is good because knowledge reduces our foolishness. Amen. <laughs> I hope students are getting it. <laughs> you come when you are very green and foolish in a particular subject. <laughs> but after the professors have worked on you, you come out when we present you for graduation with much less foolishness. <laughs> and we thank God for that. <laughs> but knowledge reduces foolishness only in some things. Knowledge is no guarantee that there is wisdom at work to depict the love of God. Because knowledge is not wisdom, it can be very deceptive to us as a community if it is not covered by the love of God. Knowledge can deceive us to think that we are the best, Knowledge can deceive us that we know better than God. When the mind is not saved, it is a very dangerous tool in the hands of the devil. We need Christian minds for our knowledge to translate into fruit that lasts for eternity. Somebody say, it is possible for the heart to get saved. But sometimes it's much harder for the mind to get saved. As a Christian community, we cannot lose touch with the fact that love, when it covers our sins, it covers our minds. So that our knowledge translates into life that changes society around us, that changes lives around us and that stands as a beacon that Christ is in our midst. The Bible depicts love as the greatest gift.